Hey, it's Karen Bryant for MMA Heat, and I'm speaking with Stefan Bonner, who, as we all know, will be facing Anderson Silva at UFC 153. And Stefan, I mean, your world has has really just done a, a complete <laughs> 180, probably, in the last week or so. What's what's your world been like since the announcement that you were going to be fighting Anderson? Oh, it went from being lonely, wishing my phone would ring and I'd hear from someone, um, to um just non-stop every time i pick it up there's like 20 new texts and every time i go on twitter there's hundreds of new mentions and yeah. really it's like i just want to focus on the fight oh but you got to do this show and this show and this show and then you got to do your medicals and this and right. so i'm just trying to get it all done now and uh you know get it out of the way now so i could just focus on the fighting because uh yeah um i only got a couple of weeks to prepare <laughs> for the biggest fight so just you know, and it's interesting. It's, it's well, it's crazy. I saw your coach Nick um, out at the K one, Nick Blomgren. I saw him at K one, and then spoke to him a little later. And uh, it's interesting. You said you're actually pretty good. That you don't get too big, and you know that you're that you're you know within range of making weight. Because that's the first thing I think of when a short notice fight is how much how much weight does a guy have to lose before he can even start to train? How much is just about dropping some weight? So how how was that for you? No, it's never been a problem. It's always been really easy for me. Um, it's like to prepare for a fight. It's like the standard is three months. Uh -huh. You know, I like three months to get ready for a fight. So it's like cramming for a, a an exam. You know, you're taking your bar exam, and you know, instead of studying the whole semester, you didn't show up for class at all. The last couple of weeks, you're <laughs> cramming, trying to get it all in and learn as much as you can. And and yeah, and I, I like I, I'm waiting for the D of his fights. I love watching my opponent fights and obsessing on him. And it just everything's crunched together. Like all the interviews and the it's a main event. So I got right. all the TV shows and and he's got a lot of fights too. And and you know I don't have as much time to you know obsess on him. Right. Honestly, I like obsessing on my opponent. So yeah, I'm cramming. Well, the thing, well, that's the thing. I mean, I wonder. You know, I think it's it's kind of obvious that would you say that he's the, the the greatest test for you ever, the toughest opponent you will have ever faced. Well, um, yeah, I, I like this fight. I do. Um, yeah. I like that it's in the backyard, and I like that I'm such a big underdog because he's already established. He's already proven that he's the greatest pound for pound guy out there. No one really argues that. Yeah. Um, but I've faced really talented guys before, saying like Machida, John Jones, Rashad, like before the rest of the world kind of knew how talented they were. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I've been in there with, with um, you know, some of the best guys in the world, but when they didn't get the credit for it. So this is great that it's like everyone knows how good he is yeah. when I go in there. And um, that, that, uh, that takes a little pressure off. I know it sounds weird, but fighting him in his backyard takes a lot of pressure off, you know? Uh, yeah, like if I could pick it, like I, I'd have it, I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't want to fight him in Chicago in my backyard, no way. Like, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad, I'm kind of eating it up that, that, you know, he's the hero down there, he's the, and it's his backyard, and everyone's going to love him, and I guarantee, you know, I'm going to fight my ass off, and whatever happens, when I leave that octagon, I think, you know, I'll win the crowd over. I think they'll Well, uh, well I don't think you have a problem Winning crowds over. I think you. I think your 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 fan base is pretty well cemented. But you bring up a lot of good points because, yeah, in a way, I mean, you're you're the spoiler. You're you've got nothing to lose. Like you said, he has more to lose with it being in Brazil. But do you do you feel that you've been, not to say that you're set up because obviously any fighter has a chance in any fight. But with the odds that came out initially, with how much of an underdog you were and that you've just been put in there for somebody to, who will bring a great fight, who will absolutely, you know, go in there and brawl, but who probably, you know, will, will let the hero win. I mean, do you feel that at all? Um, yeah, yeah. This is like uh, Anderson's chance, not really his chance, but like, um, you know, the UFC um, was kind of backed into a corner yeah, here. And sure. How the hell can we save this card? Well, let's put Brazil's most popular fighter on the card mm -hmm. and put him in with, there with someone where he could really showcase his skills. And, you know, I'm now let's be honest here. I'm, I'm like at the middle of my division. I'm yeah. not like in line for a title shot or anything. And, um, when he has stepped up to the two Oh five, five pound weight class, um, he looked even better than at 185. Like, I don't think, um, Irvin or Forrest made it past two minutes. So no, Irvin was fast. 
Caught the leg, <laughs> boom, done. Yeah, so uh, I, I, I kind of like, too, that um, I wish I had a little more time, but he's only got a couple weeks, too. And, and um, you know, it's at 205, so I don't know. I just hope to God he takes me a little lightly. <laughs> 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 you know? Well, and, what uh, do you think about the fact that he's been getting a little grief for not fighting a middleweight contender? You know, obviously, Chris Weidman, there's guys that are in line that are looking for a title shot. Well, it makes perfect sense. Like, he, you know, I mean, he beat Chael pretty easily, hands down. And I'm sure since then, he hasn't had anything lined up. I doubt he's been busting his ass in the gym. Yeah. So on short notice, is he really going to fight the the top contender in a five-round fight where he has to uh, cut all that weight and drop down and make weight and at the same time, like, get in great shape to handle a five-round fight? That's mm-hmm. impossible. You know? It's, it's like, I, I don't blame him. Like, um... I mean, it's a perfect decision on his part. Like, yeah, five-round fight, having to make weight, fighting the top contender in his division is something that, no way. He's not going to do that on short notice. Right. But, God, I know he'd love to fight in his uh, backyard in his, in his hometown of Brazil and, and you know, with all his adoring fans and put on a good show for him. But, hey, why not fight a, a mid-level 205 or a fight where I don't have to cut and make all that weight and a three-round fight where I, you know, don't have to get in the type of shape I need to be in for a five-round fight. So, it, like, it it, it kind of makes sense um, how this fight was put together. Like, yeah, I don't I don't blame him for turning down wide men and turning down a five-rounder and not, you know, having to go down to 185. This makes way more sense. And to you, though, you know, there's a lot that's been made of the fact that you declined Glover Teixeira for fewer Twitter followers, right? I know it sounds like a joke, but honestly, like, um, I've been doing this a long time, 11 years. Like I said, um, you know, I fought, like, um, the top guys before they were on top for, like, small paydays and little attention. And, and yeah, I, I have no interest in doing that anymore, you know, like the... Glover Teixeira or the Gustafsons, like the guys that have a lot of talent that the people don't know. I've done that too many times in my career. And I know it sounds like a joke. Oh, I'm going to have more Twitter followers. But no, that's a measure of popularity. It really is. Um, And by the way, are you following me? Because I don't know if you are. (laughs) I think so. If I'm not, I I definitely will. Um, Thanks. But no, you do. Honestly, I don't go on much. And before I had this fight, I like hadn't been on in a week. And, um, and I go on there, and I usually just, like, uh, take pictures and think of things and just post them, and that's about it. You know, yeah. I'm not really on there and getting information, following people. You know, it's like I have to twist my arm and make myself do it. Right. So it's um, it's kind of tedious. Uh, but you do prove, a, you know, have a good point because I don't, I don't think it's any secret to say that you're you're – Thinking about the end of your career, right? I mean, you were sort of semi-ish retired before this fight got announced, and so no, five days ago, in my mind, I was retired. Yeah. I mean, I really was. I mean, um, that was I. Dewey Cooper trains at One Kick Gym as well, and um, that's what he said. He's like, just last week, like I was talking to you, you were retired. Now you're from Anderson Silva. What the hell is going on? And I'm like. Hey, buddy, I don't know either. You know, life's ripped sometimes. But it's true. Like, my last three opponents, I've been the more popular guy. I've helped elevate their game. I passed the test. I beat them all. Um, And I'm like, you know, 11 years, if I'm going to keep doing this, I want to fight someone who's going to elevate me. I want to fight someone who has that popularity, who 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 has all those Twitter followers. And really, I was I would have been happy. Like, I really campaigned hard to, to fight Forrest and coach tough. That was the job I really thought I could get if I, if I really um, just kept cramming it down Dana's throat and getting people to harass him and all that on Twitter. And, and um, you know what? It didn't work. It wasn't meant to be. And Twitter, and um, like, Forrest uh, has a lot more Twitter followers than me. He's like 250,000. And then I look, Anderson has 2.5 million, about 50 times what I do. So it's kind of like, man. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. Right. Well, it is a little bit of a field of dreams thing, though, Stefan. You know, that if you build it, they will come. So perhaps if you were more active on Twitter, you would get more followers. No, I honestly, whatever. If I fight someone like Anderson, I get more followers. Right. Just from the time um, it was a rumor, like on Wednesday was the first I heard, would you fight Glover Teixeira? I'm like, you know my rule right. to my man at Wayne. I go, you know my rule. I'm going to get back in there and do it again. He's got to have more Twitter followers than me. Right. And then the next text is, would you fight Anderson Silva? And I went, uh, 
And I got on Twitter. I'm like, 2.5 million? Jackpot. Million? Like, I hit the jackpot or something. And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. And, uh, and, and then I, I went and worked out the next day. Worked out hard. But I'm like, man, like, come on. This fight's never, you know. Yeah. I, Dana's never going to put me in there. You know, like, I, you know, he's pretty much, me and him talked. And we kind of were like, okay, you, it's not meant to be. You're not going to coach tough. All right, then I'll probably hang it up, Dana. And that was kind of our conversation. So I went and trained hard, but in the back of my head, I thought, like, this is never going to happen. And um, lo and behold, Thursday night, um, it happened all right. And I want to know how you and Ariel Helwani knew about this before I even heard from Wayne. My well, manager. Before he even asked me if I'd fight him, I had Ariel hit me up. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it's I know our you job. Aren't the hoots. <laughs> no, but it's it's our job to get in there and find stuff out and talk to coaches that we randomly happen to see at K one and find out about you and ask how you're doing. And uh, stuff like how that. did you hear? How did you hear? Let me guess. You Ed know, Sorg? I'm trying to think how I heard. It's just you know we have this little network of people that whispers start to go and. You know, then you do, you get on your, you get on your phone and you start texting away. You're like, did you hear this? Did I do that? And you start calling coaches and doing what you can. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a small I want community. a name, Karen. <laughs> I want a name. It's a small community. You know, did you, want, did you want the Rampage fight too? And we, we were talking about, you are talking about, you know, Forrest and stuff. But Rampage and you, there was, you know, a little bit of dancing yeah. in that fight as well. Was that something that, that would have been? Fine. Like, that was like, that's been my dream fight for a while. And yeah. that was part of motivation i know my last fight with kyle kingsbury mm -hmm. i was like a four to one underdog but i felt so much pressure like i had to win that fight not just because you double your money if you win that was a big part of it but also because then i could finally be in that position to call out rampage and get that dream fight and i really hadn't been in that position yeah now i'm on a nice three fight win streak and now i could call out rampage and i could probably get that fight you know yeah. so yeah that's a fight i really wanted he was just in the 18 movie his right. stock was high and, um, yeah, I really thought uh, I could get that fight. And then they gave it to Bader, and I was I was crushed. But then I got the idea, oh, my God, I'll just campaign hard and, like, get everyone to harass Dana and have me and Forrest be coaches of tough. Now I'm in a position where I could ask for that, too. Right. And so, like, last fight, there was so much pressure on me that I had to win. I had to win so I could, you know, uh, call these people out and try to get those big dream fights with the, the big names, with the B.A. Baracus of the A-team. And yeah, and then like to pull a full circle with Forrest and, uh, you know, when that didn't work out, I really just lost my interest, like in fighting, like, you know, yeah. um, my sayings enlightenment is a quiet acceptance of what is, and it's not like I'm bitter and mad. It's just, Hey, it wasn't meant to be. It's God's way of saying, you know, move on with your life. And, um, that's where I was mentally. And like, thank God though. Like, um, I I'd kind of been letting myself go, you know, and it's been like 10 months since I fought and I, yeah. my mind was retired. But just so happened, Josh Rafferty from season one, The Ultimate Fighter, mm -hmm. called me up and said, like, uh, probably what, about like six weeks ago, and said, hey, we want you to come down here and help Dave Batista, the WWE star, train for his MMA fight. He needs big guys who would be good training partners, who wouldn't hurt him, who'd push him and help him. And he knows me, he knows I'm a good training partner. And I said, all right, dude, that's a good job. You know, a couple of weeks, he's paying me well. Um yeah, but I better just get off my ass and at least get in mediocre shape. Just right. do some jiu-jitsu classes and hit some pads and yeah. wrestle. You know, just just so I'm not pathetically out of shape when I'm down there. Right. So just God, I did that, or else like, there's, you know, I feel really bad about this fight. But um, you know, uh, you know, only a couple of weeks to prepare. Being in mediocre shape is isn't that bad. I really think. Um, um, you know, I keep training my ass off till I leave for Brazil, mm -hmm. and we'll see when I get in there. We really, you really don't know until you get in there. But yeah, I like pushing the pace. I like being aggressive and and getting in the guy's face. And I'm a pressure fighter. That's sure. that's how I fight. I I take a fast pace and put the pressure on. So right. and I'm gonna I'm gonna that's my plan. I'm gonna do that, and we'll see if um, three weeks was enough to <laughs> <laughs> to get me in that kind of shape to be able to do that. I well, won't know until I get in there. Well, we have to see. Yeah, and here's the thing. Let's say best case scenario, you go down there, you you, you go, you conquer, you come back victorious. Then, like you said, you're in the position to, to, to ask for a lot of things. But, I mean, do you think that then you should legitimately be able to say, okay, I got next for John Jones if he if he gets past Vitor? I mean, do you really – just trying to think where that – 
places you in the line for the light heavyweight title. No, I mean, geez, like that's that'd be the great dilemma that I pray to God I could have yeah. pulling off the upset against uh, Anderson Silva, and really, it's like the perfect storybook ending to a career. That'd be like, how could I ever top that? Right. All these years I've been trying to top the Forest fight, and I haven't been able to. I do that, I finally top the Forest fight, and like, oh. It's to be the perfect note to hang it up on. Right. But then on the other hand, I'm in a perfect position to get a big fight. Of course. And, and this is my last fight on the contract and get a new contract, yeah. big money, big fight. And, and yeah, would I rather have the perfect career ending or be rich? <laughs> you know, it's quite a dilemma that I'd love to have. Well, here's the thing, too, Stefan. Obviously, you have another career. We talked about your television work and stuff. And I've actually, you know, been going on my own campaign over at Fuel for you and I to be working together on a broadcast. Because oh. we, we haven't had that magic team oh, yet. And it's, it needs just to happen. <laughs> it, it definitely does yeah. need to happen. But, um, you know, I just am curious if you, you know, regardless of what happens at, at the fight, but, you know, how you picture your legacy. I mean, you've been immortalized, you and Forrest, on T-shirts now, your fight, and everybody talks about you guys putting the company on the map and everything. But how do you see, you know, your career and, and, and at the end of the day, be it after this fight or after, you know, a few more and a new contract, how do you, you know, want us to talk about you when you're all done? See, that's the thing. Legacy is saying, like, what do you want other people to think of you? And I, that's just so ego dominated way of thinking. I'm really not like that. Like, yeah. I don't care. I just fight, you know, because I like going in there and, 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 and testing myself and testing someone else. And yeah, if I go in there with someone telling and just take them through the ringer and get the respect out and just give them a, a fight, like that's me, you know, I love being in dog fights and, yeah. And making it gritty and ugly. And, and, you know, the fans just happen to really like that. Like, I have the type of fights, I you know, don't get me wrong, I can fight smart fights too, but I'm known to have the type of fights that inspire people because I'm, yeah, I know, I'm, I've never been the greatest athlete or the national champion wrestler or, yeah. you know, the slickest, most talented. Like, Anderson's the type of people that people all admire and look up to so much because of his talent, because right. he's just so awesome. Right. But me, People um, look at me and see the way I fight, and they become ex inspired because, hey, he's a, just an average Joe like me, and if he could do it, I can. And I'm not just saying that. Like, um, after that forest fight, um, this one lady, I've been in touch with her um, now since that fight. She was pretty much on her deathbed with cancer and giving up. And um, really, um, Suzanne her name by the way and really lost the will to live and was ready to die and after that fight like boy she she was inspired she wanted to live again she wanted to fight the cancer she wanted to be better and it actually inspired her to to beat the cancer which is just crazy when i hear of it and I had another guy not too long ago tell me yeah, that fight he was in and out of jail, addicted to drugs, right. stealing and all that. And that fight inspired him to get clean and start um, going to gym training. He's he's taken he's had MMA fights since then. He's in good shape now. He's got a real job. He hasn't been on drugs or in jail. And, and it's really inspired him to change his life. So um, I don't know. To, to me, I guess if I have to answer that question is like, yeah, I want to inspire people with the way I fight. Well, and certainly having never been stopped ever is uh, is an inspiration. To other fight. I mean, you know, you go out there and like you just said, you fight the kind of fight that you do and still have been never, ever stopped, never tapped out, nothing. I mean, that's impressive. Well, that's me, you know, growing up in Pee Wee wrestling, I got beat a lot of times. I wasn't like the best, uh, the best wrestler, but yeah. you know, I'd never get pinned and all my jujitsu tournaments, I'd never get tapped and mm -hmm. all my boxing matches, like I'd never get stopped and all my fight. It, it's all about, um, my, my motto is if, if you, if you never quit, um, you really can't fail. Like you could have setbacks and that's, mm -hmm. that goes true. Like, and everything else I do, you know, um, like even with the T-shirts yeah. and art that I do in that company, like, man, that's, that's a rough bit. It's, it's, it's not easy business, but uh, you make mistakes. And if you just don't give up, you just keep trying and pushing forward. Mm -hmm. You really can't lose. It's like you have setbacks, you learn from them, and then you push forward. And then, hey, you have a victory, you conquer. You didn't make the same mistake as before. Yeah. And that's the same attitude I take into fighting. If the final bell rings and I'm still putting it on you. Hey, you may get the decision, but you know, did you really beat me up? 
did he really, did, you know, I, I don't know. And then the, the, the fight with Forrest is a perfect example of that. You know, hey, he got the decision. He won the fight. But, you know, I believe me, I was dead dog tired. It would have been much easier just to go fetal, lay down, cover up. But, uh, yeah. you know, just not quitting. Just keep fighting. Just never stop fighting and you can't lose, you know. And and that's a perfect example. I went and got the contract and then the sport blew up. And, I mean, so many positives came out of that, you mm-hmm. know. It's all about, yeah, never stop fighting. Well, it's awesome. Well, I, I thank you for talking with me today. And, I, I, you know, I wish I were going to be in Brazil. I, I won't be able to be there, but, um, I, you know, I know you're going to deliver it. You're going to use Eminence Front? That's my song. Nice. I was thinking about maybe coming out to Beautiful Day by you too, because that's what I came out to Great when I fought song. Machine at Brazil. So, and that's kind of bringing a full circle too, you yeah. know. That was almost 10 years ago. Wow. And wow. now, first time back there since then. Are you going to be but, emotional, you think? Hell yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. Just thinking about it gets me emotional. I'm, I'm emotional anyway. Right. And, uh, yeah, just the biggest fight I could ever imagine, you know, on the world stage main event. And, and like, I love Brazil too. You know, I came up with Carlson Gracie. He was like a father figure to me and he died now. I have Sergio Pena and he kind of is too. And I just love the culture and the people and like at all the places I've been in my life. I got to say that was Brazil is my favorite, and uh, and I really love it there. I know the crowd will be for Anderson too, but I'll eat that up. Yeah. So yeah, I'll be really emotional, and um, you know, and that's that's fuel. You know, that's me saying, you know, I don't care what happens to me in there. I'm I'm, I'm going to keep going forward and fighting to the bitter end, and uh, I never have a problem doing that anyway. So that's, well, that's all. That's why I- we love you, Stefan. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Well, thank you, and I'll let I'll let you get back. I don't know if you're in the you're in the rest cycle between your your you know your tough workouts, but I know you're Mr. Popularity now. You're the prom king. You're the you know whatever the homecoming get whatever we want to call you. Your phone won't stop ringing. Yeah, I do but I've say got thanks. You have to see tonight next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> skyping me. So. Right. Well, thank you, and um and best of luck. You know, have a great fight, and um and we look forward to seeing whatever it is that you do next. Yeah, and I'm sure. I pull off the win or even give them a good fight and um, I'll get a gig on fuel with you. Awesome. Can't wait. Forward to it. Cool. Thanks, Evan. Thank you, Karen. Bye. Bye. I'm Stefan Bonner and you're watching MMA Heat.